Well, hi everyone, three big hurricanes out there in the Atlantic coming on in towards the coastline of the US, North America actually, because it's also down into Mexico. So let's go from left to right. First of all, Hurricane Katya. This is heading right into Mexico. This hurricane is still a category two, even though it's bumping into the Mexican coast. And with the earthquake they had, that is probably going to cause some serious damage. Now, the big one that we're going to be focusing most on here is Hurricane Irma, which you all have been paying attention to, I'm sure. Category four strength, still a devastating devastating hurricane wind speeds up to 150 miles per hour. The biggest change is Hurricane Jose. Look at the defined eye on this thing. It's now up to 150 miles per hour as well. So two hurricanes fairly close to each other, kind of moving in the same direction, both a category four status, 150 miles per hour. That is the crazy thing. Hurricane Irma is the current hurricane we're most watchful for because it's taking its aim towards Florida. Hurricane Jose is hopefully going to be swept back up and around towards the Atlantic Ocean. But if this thing wants to grab a little bit more of a westward trajectory, it's going to hit San Juan, uh, some of those islands out here by the Caribbean, Bermuda, and then maybe even over into Cuba. So that would be a devastating path for Hurricane Jose. Let's go ahead and talk, first of all, more in depth about Hurricane Irma. Look at the eye wall that's now starting to collapse in on itself. What's this telling us? Well, it's telling us that the eye wall is doing what's called a recirculation. And hurricanes do this. Essentially, it's a big, strong storm that keeps churning and churning and churning. But over time, that eye just kind of loses some of its deformity, so it weakens a little bit. Some of the stronger bands go to the outside of the eye. But if it hits that warmer ocean water, this corridor right in here, it's going to re-strengthen again. And this hurricane is probably going to continue to be extremely strong, pushing in towards Florida. In fact, hurricane warnings for the United States have been issued even out to the Cuban coastline down to Key West outside edge of Miami and some of the islands here extending east of Florida. This is also for storm surge. Storm surge is probably going to be one of the most dangerous aspects of this storm. Here's a hurricane tracker. Watch this thing currently category four. Again, even though that's not five like it was, this is still immensely powerful. Not only is the size of it huge itself over 400 miles, the wind speeds are 150. That is structurally devastating for most buildings. If you own a house and it gets hit with 150 or more mile per hour wind, that's often going to try to rip it down to its foundation. Now, the buildings in Florida were fortified quite a bit, especially after Hurricane Andrew. So they went in and tried to really fix things around, get them stronger. But look at the wind speeds uh, forecasted on through. Even as it hits Miami, we're still looking them to be about 150. And the biggest thing that's going to happen is it's going to hit this corridor of warm ocean water. So the hurricane might weaken over a bit of Cuba. That land is going to help shear it apart, kind of rip the storm apart. But if it hits this warm ocean water, that's just fuel. It's like throwing gas on a fire. It grows big and tries to push up north. Now, the storm will die down. For instance, Monday, 8 o'clock, you can see 75 miles per hour when it's near Jacksonville. But even that storm at 75 miles per hour can do devastating damage. And then there's Jose. Check this out. Still category four. The best hope is that it curves back out into the Atlantic Ocean. But as it goes, it's still got those wind speeds up above 120 miles per hour. It wouldn't take much for the upper level winds to get a little weak and for this thing to sweep back west. When this is in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, our weather models have the most trouble with it. So Jose's path, its forecast path here, is probably going to wobble quite a bit over the next few days. This is just the modeling doing the best it can based on what it's observing. Let's talk about some actual numbers of wind speed, and this is incredible. Look at our model forecast for Miami 48 hours out. That's right. 131 miles per hour in the city of Miami, according to one of our newer model forecasts. And that's just a wind speed. The wind gust would probably be much higher. Typically, a gust can be 20 to almost 30 miles per hour higher. So this is an early run. Models are still pacing things together. But with a Category 4 hurricane, the eye wall has winds up 150 miles per hour. So to see this number is not out of the question whatsoever. And I know that's kind of scary to even think about but it's a devastatingly strong hurricane, all right? So seeing those numbers on our modeling jump up to 150 is not out of the question. And rainfall forecast flooding is also something we'll be watching carefully. Check out the model's picture, especially the southern tip of Florida right by Miami. 
forecasted it out to 17 inches at the moment. The rainfall forecast is probably going to be one of the things that varies the most. That could easily drop down maybe to 8 inches. It could go up to 20 or 25. It just depends on how quickly that hurricane moves through Florida. So I hope this has been just kind of a good insight into what the hurricane situation is right now. We still want to be tracking this hurricane all through the day today, especially when it hits that sweet spot in between Florida and Cuba. That's where this thing could re-strengthen, Irma could re-strengthen and really dump not only some heavy rain, but intense winds on all of Florida.